This is the Remarkable Climate Leaders Podcast. In every region, in every town of Europe, there is a climate leader paving the way for climate transition. You might not have heard of them yet. And what is a climate leader anyway? Let's meet one and find out. Today, our guest is Geroid Fitzgibbon, specialist, mediator, and co-founder of a sustainable energy community in Ireland. Geroid is changing the way his community thinks about energy and climate. He is reframing the energy transition from being seen as enforced to being seen as desirable. How is that possible? Let's find out. Hello, Gerard. Hi, Sabina. Thank you for being here. Let's start with the development process of the energy community's Tipperary Cooperative. What was the inspiration to get there? And what was and currently is your role within? Well, as you mentioned, we're a cooperative of 15 small local community groups. So these would be geographically based um, areas uh, and groups representing those small areas. And and these are working together then under the umbrella of our Energy Communities Tipperary Cooperative. Uh, so I am a volunteer director on the the board. So it's a not, it's a not for profit, and um, so we meet every month to oversee the work and uh, to you know give some direction to the staff and the contractors that we have. The entire project started with a conversation on can we do something in our village and in our community? And um, what that something is was maybe create employment, create a more prosperous community. And through looking at a variety of different teams, uh, the, the community looked at the one of energy and saving energy in particular. So uh, at that point, then uh, the, the group set out and did Ireland's first uh, self-funded community energy plan, which was really the the information on uh, how a small community of four or five hundred homes is y- used more than a million euro worth of energy just for home for home energy, and uh, and then as a team, uh, they set about uh, changing that, and so reducing that outward flow of money on t- uh, being spent on fossil fuels, uh, keeping that uh, that that money in the community to more of energy efficient homes, uh, community facilities. And um, so it all, it all started with that, with that first simple question. What is the vision that you have for, uh, for the, uh, the community, the cooperative? Well, I suppose our, our communities, uh, they all want to create local benefit, solving problems day to day instead of having the big vision. And, uh, and often I guess that's where Many, many initiatives uh, come together uh, through people trying to solve immediate problems. And then they find as they're doing that, that, oh, yeah, we're also solving, maybe you're helping to solve these these bigger problems. Can you share with us a success story from uh, from somewhere in the county? Our work has been to find workers, tradespeople, contractors and match them with a groups of interested householders you know, that uh, we, we bring together through word of mouth, through local information, uh, information meetings, and then joining them together in a sense. Uh, so uh, it's it's more about that approach, that uh, one-stop shop approach, that clustering or grouping approach uh, of bringing people together, um, households who want to do work, uh, the contractors who maybe have the skills to do it, uh, finding the state funds that might be available to su- source such work, you know, finding the social finance organizations that can provide bridging finance. Thank you. I know uh, there is a story about uh, the local hurling team. Yeah, well, it's funny when people talk about uh, key performance indicators, KPIs and different things like that. Uh, in rural Ireland, often it's the, uh, you, you know, very local concerns Uh and and at the very beginning of one of our communities in Tromban, they noticed that uh, uh, some young people were leaving the area and they could not find work in the area. And these, of course, were a loss to the local hurling team, hurling, which is the traditional Irish uh, sport played in Ireland. And um, 
you know, so part of the motivation was, can we create employment which will allow people, more people to continue working in our in our area and therefore also participate in our community, participate in our clubs. And I suppose uh, that was both an, in, an indicator of a need at the very beginning and then some years later uh, of success, you know, when when so much work, uh, when we found a way to to make so much work happen, those jobs were there and indeed a number of people who are playing on the local hurling team, it is due to, to our uh, citizen-led renovation projects that we have been moving forward for the last 10 years. Do you think that this is how you can get things moving by uh, showing that uh, it is possible, by giving an example, by uh, having the uh, the entire community applaud, observe, participate in uh, in a process? Yes, indeed. I, th- I think that uh, the, the local wins have to be there. I suppose it's the word of mouth effect, uh, something that we afterwards discovered that was called community social marketing, uh, where people talk to each other about their good experiences, either of getting their home upgraded. Um, you know, what's obviously very important for a citizen-led renovation project is that trustworthiness, you know, where you're able to give people independent advice about what kind of solutions are possible for their home to make it warmer, more energy efficient. As the song goes, uh, it's a long way to Tipperary. Is energy transition a trending topic only now in Ireland or it has been for the past 20 years? Yeah, I think when when we started out on this journey, it was very much um, very far down the agenda. People weren't talking about it uh, so much. Uh, there's another expression relating to Tipperary in Ireland, which goes back to Ireland's times of... Uh, rebellion and revolution which is about where when tip uh, where tipperary leads ireland follows but anyway uh, so in terms of climate action and energy energy transition tipperary has been very active through the local energy agency the local authority and and, and the community organizations such as ours uh, but today now we have a, a different picture when there are in particular in, in ireland since the new energy white paper in 20 15, which spoke about decarbonization. Since then, we've had multiple, many different types of policies coming in to support community ownership of energy, renewable heat, uh, renewable electricity. So, uh, we and we also have a support program now called the Sustainable Energy Communities Program, which is uh, providing the time of mentor community energy mentors to individual community groups. So all of these supports are there now. And I guess the, uh, you know, it's either a feast or a famine. Uh, when the energy communities temporarily started off, none of those supports were there. Now there are many, many of those supports there. So it's a question of trying to find the right ones. Um, you know, if we're availing of funding, different types of funding that, uh, you know, that it's 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 going to meet what, it, what energy communities temporarily mission is, which is making the energy transition serve rural communities. So uh, that's that's the important uh, compass by which uh, we direct ourselves at all times. Our listeners, uh, they're from local communities, but also from uh, different levels of uh, governance. Um, therefore, what is your advice, let's say, first for rural rural communities than for local governments? Yeah, well, for rural communities is, you know, it's nobody is going to do it for you and that often you cannot depend on uh, the government or the local authorities to come to you and offer this solution. Uh, so I think, um, you know, go, getting out there and having a go um, is can be the first step. Um and finding the type of energy project that suits your uh, community and your area. Tell me, please, Gerald, what does being a climate leader mean to you? Yeah, well, being a climate leader is understanding that the energy transition or climate action needs to be communicated in a way that makes sense to people at whatever stage or place that they're at. Um, you know, I think there's no point talking about climate to people who cannot pay their electricity bills. 
um, or who are cold in their homes. So, you know, so I think a climate leader is somebody who is able to not get lost in the jargon and translate like national uh, policy um, or an international uh, movement into 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 that local language that's understandable by people. Our project uh, moved forward very effectively from the beginning because we had a discussion and listening and plan and community planning process. I think you it's important not to talk down to people. Thank you very much, Gerald, for uh, being part of our remarkable Climate Leader podcast. Climate leadership starts with a simple question. Can we do something in our community? Gerald brings proof that it's all about taking one small initiative at a time, not about reaching for the moon. Therefore, dare to stop waiting for the government to provide and start creating from scratch. Initiatives will build on each other when you propose a clear narrative translated into accessible language. What do you think a climate leader is? Who? Where? Discover the stories of your region on climateleaders.eu and on your favorite podcast app.